Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture is also an introductory um, lecture to one particular um, aspect of solid geometry. I will just introduce you to pyramids, basically definition and elements of the pyramids. Um, this is part of a few lectures where I'm just introducing the concepts of solid geometry. I'm not talking about properties, formulas, etc. Just explaining what pyramid actually is all about. Now, this lecture is part of the Advanced Math for Teenagers course, which is presented on unizor.com, and that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from, because the site contains uh, notes for the lecture, which basically explains exactly the same material, and you can always refer to the notes uh, to find out what was you know, in the lecture. Um, okay, so, pyramids. Now, um, I have already explained before um, about conical surfaces. These are surfaces which are uh, formed by a um, certain number of straight lines which connect each point of some curve called directress to a fixed point which is called an apex or apex. Now, what is the pyramid? It's a special type of conical surface. So, to introduce it, I just have to explain what kind of a curve lies in the base, and that basically defines the pyramid. So, assume that our directress, the, the, the curve which is in the base of the pyramid, is some kind of a polygon on a plane. So, there is a plane and there is a polygon on this plane. Well, in this case I was trying to put uh, some kind of hexagonal. Doesn't really matter what kind of a polygon. So let's imagine that we have a polygon um, on uh, on some plane alpha and this polygon will be used as a directrice of the conical surface. Now we choose some apex outside of this um, plane A and connect uh, each point with an apex. So, we will have some kind of a conical surface, which contains like two parts, before um, the apex and after the apex. Okay, so this is the beginning of my constructing the pyramid. What we will take from this um, conical surface is only the part between the apex and the plane where the base is lying. So these are not part of the cone of the uh, of the conical surface which I am considering. And these are not. So the conical surface is cut from the top by the apex and from the bottom by my plane A uh, alpha, sorry, alpha. So this part, so this part of the surface actually, forms the sides of the pyramid. And the, pyr the polygon itself, which is in the plane alpha, A, B, C, D, F in this particular case, uh, constitute, uh, constitutes another um, part of this pyramid. So the um, conical surface and the, the, and the base, which is only within this conical surface, the polygon itself, they form a, an object, a geometrical object, which is called a pyramid. So that's, that's the definition. The base for definition is the conical surface, which we have explained in the prior lectures. Okay. Now, um, so what are 
the elements of the pyramid. Now we are talking about basically terminology. Now these are point vertices, same thing as in the polygon, the points are called vertices. Now this is also a vertex, uh, but it's a special vertex because it's actually an apex. Um, so you can call it a vertex, but it's better to call it an apex, then we will know what we are talking about. Uh, reserving the word vertex for any of the points of the polygon um, which connect uh, these segments to a figure. Okay, what else? So this is called the base. The polygon itself, it's a base. Um, okay. The A, S, B, S, C, S, D, S, etc. These are edges as well as A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, etc. So all these segments which connect the points, uh, vertices of the pyramid, including apex, all these segments are called edges. Um, now triangles, S, A, B, S, B, C, S, C, G, etc. These are all sides um, and uh, the polygon A, B, C, D, F is the base. Now sides and base are commonly called faces of the pyramid. Uh, in particular the side faces sometimes are called lateral faces. All right, so that's the terminology. Let me check if I have forgot anything. Um, okay, that's it. Now, the classification of the pyramid, well, there are different pyramids, obviously. For instance, if you have a triangle as the base of the pyramid, This actually must be dotted line because it's kind of invisible, right? So we have a triangle as the base, and the pyramid is called, well, guess what? Triangular. <laughs> um, now you can have a square, for instance, at the base. Let me just draw another pyramid for you. So let's consider you have a square and I will view the square from a side, right? So that's why I will have something like this. And these are also invisible lines. So this is a square pyramid because at the base I have a square. By the way, Egyptian pyramids are square pyramids. Well, obviously you can have a rectangle and then it will be a rectangular pyramid or a hexagonal and then it will be hexagonal pyramid, etc. So you can differentiate different pyramids by the number of vertices of the base. Three, four, five, whatever the polygon is. Um, another important characteristic of the pyramid is its altitude or height. Well, if you drop a perpendicular from the apex to the plane which contains the basis, um, the, this perpendicular is called basically a, a, an altitude or height of the pyramid. Now, let me just draw a pyramid which might not actually be something which you imagine as a pyramid, but nevertheless it's still a pyramid. So let me start from the same uh, square in the beginning, and then I will put my vertex over there. So it would be something like this. This is also a pyramid.
not typical, I would say. It's some kind of a skewed pyramid. And what would be the altitude of this pyramid? Well, again, if this is a plane where the base belongs to, we have to drop a perpendicular to this plane, and this perpendicular is an altitude or height of the pyramid. Now, and um, the last kind of a pyramid which I would like to consider, which probably would be something uh, we will be dealing more often than others, is um, consider you have a, a regular polygon as the base. Well, let's say it's some kind of a hexagonal at the base. And the apex has the perpendicular dropped to the plane uh, falling exactly in the center of this regular polygon. Something like this. And this is the plane where the polygon belongs to. Well, in this case, if this is a regular uh, polygon, which means all sides are equal or angles are equal, etc., and this is the center of this regular polygon, and the apex um, projects down using the perpendicular to the plane, the base plane, it, if it projects exactly in the center, it's kind of a regular pyramid with n sides. Sometimes it's called n pyramid. Um, uh, what's important is it's regular. Well, now it's regular, you obviously understand that uh, all side edges are the same uh, and, and all sides are also the same, etc. These are all properties which we will be considering separately. Just as a terminology, it's an n pyramid. Now, what else is important in pyramid? Uh, a specific case. What if I will have another plane? Um, something like this. And I will put this plane parallel to alpha. So the beta plane is parallel to alpha plane. And it intersects this perpendicular somewhere. Basically cutting the pyramid from the top. And that's what we will have as a result. So this plane beta is parallel to alpha and it cuts the top of the pyramid. Then it's called a truncated pyramid. Now, by the way, truncated pyramid, you can always look at um, um, a, a, a United States currency bill, one dollar, and you will have a picture of a truncated pyramid. It's some kind of a Masonic symbol. So truncated pyramid is also something which we will be dealing with as far as different problems are concerned. Um, so that's probably it. That's all about pyramid I wanted to talk about, all these kind of terminology um, words uh, wi wi which uh, qualifies the, the elements of the pyramids. Um, now, I would encourage you to look at uh, notes to this lecture. I think it's important just to read it again. You will be more familiarized with um, the terminology because as soon as I will finish all these introductory lectures um, which basically bring you the concepts of solid geometry, then we will go through properties and uh, I will just use this terminology uh, very frequently. Okay, that's, yeah, that's probably everything I wanted to talk about um, uh, pyramids. Um, wait a minute, one more thing I think I forgot. Yeah, the altitude, well, the, of a truncated pyramid. The altitude of the truncated pyramid is obviously this piece of the perpendicular which we have used to have and we cut from the top this piece or whatever is left. Basically, it's a distance between these two um, parallel planes. So any perpendicular between these two parallel pla uh, uh, planes would be, uh, would be equal to this 
particular at altitude of the truncated uh, pyramid. Now that's it. Thanks. Thanks very much, and uh, good luck. <laughs>